Okay, so for part three of this OSFS40 Surpass engine, um, I've got my clean parts here now. You can see this is my workbench in the garage. Sunday is kind of a rough day to film in the garage because my wife's in and out here uh, doing laundry and that's what you hear in the background. It's, I'm still trying to adapt to not actually having a workroom in the house anymore to do this, so I'm kind of improvising. In one of the videos, the uh, the quick look, or not the, the box to the bench run, I mentioned that I didn't have, or that the proper uh, throttle rotor stop screw was not in place, so I did purchase a rotor stop screw. Here are the bearings I've got to install in here, and I think I've got the nasty bearings that I've removed also in here. Um, I've got my new camshaft bearings here basically ready to go. I did pull the valves on this, cleaned everything up to the best of my ability or you know, best I wanted to get it cleaned up. Doesn't look like lighting is going to allow me to show you in there. Maybe I can go get a flashlight real quick and uh, show you that. Hang on a second. Okay, I've got a flashlight here. We can shine in here. Hopefully we'll try and see what it looks like in the board. I'm trying to get the right angle here. There we go. So it's not perfectly clean in there. It's been through the uh, ultrasonic several times. I've tried cleaning in there better with a Q-tip and LA's. It really doesn't matter as long as it's free of debris and the bearing will go in there fine. That's all that really matters. Um, so basically this is all the parts ready to be reassembled. So I think the first step is to put the bearings, the camshaft bearings, in the crankcase and the cover, and then we can uh, complete the assembly from there. Okay, I'm ready for the camshaft bearing installation in the cover. Now I've got my heat gun here. First thing I'm going to do is hopefully not do that. Well, I guess that's going to blow no matter what. I'm going to put it down here. Heat it up a little bit here. This doesn't need to be super hot. Just kind of warm. Should just kind of warm should work. Hopefully, I want to try and get this laying in there as flush as possible. And boom. That bearing is in place. Okay, so now for this crankcase bearing, what I'm going to do, and I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to be able to get on video because it's tough to try and do this correctly without screwing something up and have the camera in front of me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat this case then I'm going to drop this bearing in place. Then I've got a, a socket that's basically the exact same size as the outer race of this. And I'm going to drop this in place in here, making sure that it's as flush as possible. And then I'm probably either going to just use this and a hammer or just take this off and drop it in here and hope there's just enough space for me to pull the awl down and press it in place. And in theory, that should be pressed in place now. Okay, so to verify, here's my cover with the bearing. The timing gear goes with this hole facing out, so it doesn't really matter for what I'm going to do here. I just want to. I just want to throw it all over the floor. Just kind of see. We got a nice rotating bearing there. Now it's trial fit. Make sure this one's flush. 
all the way in here and looks like we're flush the cover goes all the way on I can screw it in place now and uh, finish putting the bearings in the in the crankcase Okay, so for the rear bearing installation, boy, the lighting just doesn't look very good in here. Typically, ideally what you would do is heat this up and drop the bearing in there. And I could use a, a punch or a socket that's just the right size to do that. Uh, but a lot of times what I do, and I know this isn't what machinists would say to do, but I don't really care, I'm not a machinist, is I go ahead and put the bearing on the crankshaft and that way I go ahead and put it in there and I can make damn sure that this is going in straight because I've got the alignment of the crankshaft going on there. So if you've cleaned up your crankshaft properly, your bearing should just slip right on there like that. And then all I gotta do is heat this up a little bit, drop it in there and I can press this right in place. There you have it. Bearings installed, the rest of the end assembly can be done now.